You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Jared Mounts. So we are pre-recording this show on Mother's Day. So everyone out there, I really hope that you got to get out there with your mother. Or if not, you at least wished her a happy Mother's Day before you went fishing. I think I'm going to buy her a jackhammer for Mother's Day. <laughs> this year, chartreuse is <laughs> white. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, hopefully I'll be seeing mine here either later tonight or tomorrow morning. We'll find out. But she's riding, yeah. so she doesn't need me right now. So she's fine. So, um, yeah, we have a really good guest. You want to bring him in? Yeah, we've had uh, Jeff Green on here before with Shallow Water Fishing Adventures. And uh, he's with us today, too, because um, May 8th here, we've had a lot of pretty heavy rains here Mm -hmm. locally and and regionally. And so um, he can't be on the water taking clients out right now in his guide service. So uh, uh, he jumped on board here and came in and is going to share with us a little bit about what he was seeing on the rivers he was fishing prior to this rain event and then Thursday uh, up to through Thursday. And then uh, once that water comes back down to a good level, kind of what, what anglers could maybe expect to see when they get out there Mm -hmm. on, on waters where you're fishing. And so let's maybe going up to the last two weeks up to this rain event, kind of what were you seeing out there on the river? Um, because the time of the year we've been, uh, catching the fish on the shorelines. We've been using, um, uh, mostly plastics this entire time up until Thursday when I felt comfortable enough to maybe try something moving. The water was 63 degrees at the time. Oh, wow. And, um, they were, they were chasing, uh, lo and behold, they were, they, they whacked a spinnerbait right off. Oh, cool. Um, at the, uh, first spot we went to. Hmm. So, um, we've been fishing. The pattern has been fishing, um, anywhere where you can find an eddy, mostly okay. scrub islands, uh, shoreline eddies and um originally we were finding them up at the head of the eddy you know and uh it, it rained hmm. recently before thursday it rained it brought the river up a little bit more and uh i feel like it pushed them back hmm. towards the back of the eddy hmm. i found them 75 yards um on the back side of an eddy oh, wow. recently near the shoreline and just off the shoreline on these little scrub islands and um We've had to fish them real slow. When I tell you slow, I mean painfully slow to catch fish on the Potomac. And I feel the same way about the uh, the Susquehanna um, and the Juniata River. The uh, fish have not responded to anything um, moving very well. Hmm. You had to throw it out, let it hit the bottom, mm-hmm. and uh, work it back one crank at a time. And uh, you'd end up getting bit. But most of the fish are being found, like I said, on the shorelines and um, and any type of eddy you can find right now. Anything where you think uh, is a good area for them to spawn, it can be anywhere in the river. I mean, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll spawn, spawn up in the creeks. They'll spawn out on the main stem of the mm-hmm. river. But um, yeah, and then Thursday, um, we didn't catch anything at the head of the eddy. They were all in the back. Hmm. What so, do you think changed? Um, probably that the uh water level water level okay cause them to move how, how big of it like so if you're going down the river or let's say you're in a section you've never been in before what size eddy does any eddy work or is there yeah something, like, i will in general that you're looking <laughs> it's, for it's funny you ask me that i find real big eddies to be um overwhelming huh. because you have to spend time in them uh, okay but if you find what they call like micro eddies small eddies where you can hit it with three or four casts and move on i mean because if they're there i'm very confident if a small mouth is there um Minus having some type of uh, weather event come through. Mm-hmm. They just can't help themselves. Mm-hmm. They're going to hit a plastic bait, um, a tube or a small swim bait or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just can't help themselves. Mm-hmm. You're going to at least get bit in one of those holes if they're there. Mm-hmm. But um, these little small shoreline eddies, you'll cast in a few times and move. But a, a large eddy, they'll be in anything. any Anything this time of year where the water is, uh, they'll relate to any type of uh, pool of water. And they won't be too far from it, but there's some they like other than that. They like some other than, um, uh, some more than others. And for people that don't know an eddy that yeah, comes good. down, yeah. um, most people know this, but, uh, when he says eddy, it's it, anything that's going to, that moving current hits a rock and there's going to be a seam line yep. that'll run off of that. You have a current break. Be a current break where the current is moving. And then just inside behind that, say rock, we'll use example of, 
is 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 slack water, but that is going to continue down well, wh- where that cur- curls back up, and actually mm-hmm. water will will go back up river behind mm-hmm. that obstruction or whatever. So hmm. that when they say eddy, that's what they're referring to is that current break. Look for a current break, a line, the stink line, and then at the bottom of that, you'll see it current actually going. You can watch bubbles, you can watch a stick, and you'll be able to see that and read that. And, yep. and the fish like that because they can sit in that that stagnant water slack water not use a lot of energy but they're sitting usually noses facing out to okay. any food the food that goes by they can dart out quickly grab that meal and then tuck back and we in. were finding Good them in call. the seams right where the slow water where the non-moving water is meeting the fast water mm-hmm. right at the seam and then um like i said you'll find them at the back of the eddy and then we were finding them at the top of the eddy. And usually if they're at the top of the eddy, they're, they're there for a reason, and that's the feed. Okay. And then you get hmm. into these lanes. And uh, when you have high enough water, the water rushes over those, those scrubby islands or rock, uh, rocky areas. Yeah. And, and they'll pull up in these spots, and they're just waiting for something to come in. Because, you know, they're always pointing pretty much upriver. Mm-hmm. They're always relating to uh, the, um, the going into the current. So this time of year... Generally speaking, how long do you give on an eddy? Again, let's just say you don't know there's fish here. How long do you give on an eddy before you give it up? Like, you just thought we're going to move on, like, especially this time of year versus like in the winter time. Um, I feel like if, if you know that they've been biting pretty aggressively, um, depending on how big the eddy is, like let's say the eddy's four, four feet wide and three feet, okay, you know, deep, you know, th- three feet uh, wide and th- three feet wide and four feet long. So like a batter's box in baseball. Yeah, pretty thing. much. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe, especially if there's two guys on the boat with me, if they throw four times each, that's eight times. If you don't get a bite in there. Oh, damn. So you're like, you're, you're gone. Smooth, yeah. yeah. Okay. But sometimes you'll find a spot and you're like, man, they're, they're not, they're just not biting. Um, recently, I experienced it on the Susquehanna. We were in a spot at a, at a creek mouth and I, I kid you not, I had the um, my line out and the the other two guys, they were fishing and uh we weren't getting a bite. And I'm like, man, there's got to be fish here. I let my lure sit there. It was a Ned rig. It was an um, eighth ounce jig head with, with a Ned bait. Uh, it took them almost a minute. Hmm. And then all of a sudden, wham, you, you, you felt them, you felt them uh, um, hit the line, punch mm-hmm. the line. Wow. And uh, they were big fish. Uh, three of them did that <sighs> in a row. And then um, we throw out again. 30 seconds went by or so, and then wham, one would hit. Hmm. It's, it's almost like they swim up and they just look at it and they're just like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, yeah. and then you just kind of have to entice them a little bit by just moving the bait just ever so much mm-hmm. and it'll trigger a strike. Hmm. Yeah. But there's, a, there's, there's some patience involved in it. So if you're not oh, yeah. getting bit in an area where you think there should be fish and, you know, the weather's been real consistent, you got to slow it completely down. I mean, painfully slow. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, and then more than more than not, you, you'll you'll find them. And that's a good tip because it's like I feel like there's a time efficiency thing, and it's such a weird spectrum of like when you're young, you're throffing water and the bait never touches. Mm-hmm. You get older, you're learning how to soak. But there's mm-hmm. that that fine spot of knowing when to leave and to, mm-hmm. and to fish effectively, I guess. Mm-hmm. And especially when you think of an eddy, I think for most people that especially if you don't fish a river, if you're not a river mm-hmm. rat or in this mm-hmm. culture, you don't you could be lost. Mm-hmm. And like an eddy, not every eddy is made cr- the Correct. same. Correct, that's exactly. And right. then how long do you spin in each eddy? Because if you think of a river, there's a right. lot of eddies to go right. through. And a lot too, just again, goes back to reading the water and, and the depth of that eddy too, also would play a role or factor as mm-hmm. far oh, as, yeah. and if the, you get some deep water eddies yeah. where you might, it's like, and I've talked before about getting that bait well up, up so that it's down. If that fish is slammed down and maybe it's a three or three foot, you know, as opposed to a foot, you know, getting it down, not floating it over top of it, you throw right to it, it's going to float over top mm-hmm. of it. And that fish is slammed to the bottom where you have to throw up. And get it down in front of its nose sometimes too. Yeah, can make and those, a difference. Those lanes that I was talking about that they'll get in, in these on these islands, these these um, grassy areas in the middle of the river, on the mm-hmm. side of the river, and on the shorelines, uh, that's going to be shallow water. Okay. And um, I mean, I've seen them in water less mm-hmm. than a foot. Wow. And you bring up a good point too. Like you're talking about a four foot, like, and it's it's really picking apart the different part. Like looking at that and almost looking at four different circles. Mm-hmm. Uh, strike zones, if you will, yeah. and working each one independently. I heard somebody the other day talking too, and this was more of a lake, but the same principle applies of how you work it. So in other words, too, you might work the outside first, work outside mm-hmm. in, 
you know, but go ahead and make sure you get at l- probably minimum of eight casts in into yeah. that set area mm-hmm. on on the front side, on the back side, like you said. So in a given day, they've moved from here to there. Which I mean, if they're there, they're going to bite. Yeah, you know, unless for some reason the temperatures dropped a lot, mm-hmm. unless the weather's caused some type mm-hmm. of something to change. Mm-hmm. But um, if they're there, they're going to bite. But if you're in a big eddy, like you're we're talking about a, a smaller eddy, but if you get into a big eddy. That whole idea of they should bite the minute you throw it in there. Well, you're gonna have to find that area that they're in, they and then they'll juice. bite. But uh, I mean, sometimes there's water that's just completely dead on the river. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. there's just nothing. It's void of fish. Mm-hmm. They're just not. They there do right got your now. feeding window still too. That's why sometimes if you are if you hit the, <clears throat> that area at the feeding window too, they're gonna they're gonna be super aggressive. Versus mm-hmm. they've already fed up. What you don't know is 30 seconds prior they fed up on a bluegill or whatever, mm-hmm. and they're not interested. In, you can throw whatever you want at them. They're just slammed on the bottom, just chilling. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that could also there there where you're talking about too, you might have to spend a little more time and entice it. Um, you that, know, that's an, another thing to add to that. How you mentioned like parts of the river can be dead, and again, in general, like let's say we have that's not a bad thing either. I no, hope people oh, no, no, understand no. that as like the water's yeah. dead. Yeah. No, I just that's terminology meaning it's it's just it's void of fish. They're just not there. Yeah, a hundred percent. And so if you have like a mile uh, two mile stretch. And you're, you're taking out a person, like how much of that two mile stretch or one mile, whatever, do you fish before you're like, we're making a bounce because like, I, I just don't feel it. Is it, do you fish a couple pieces of it? Is it mm-hmm. just two or three eddies in an area? Yeah, you'll you'll fish, Um, I guess everyone's different, but the ones that you feel like you catch the fish the most at, okay, um, you'll hit those and then you'll know something's up. Okay. And then you'll just, you'll take a ride either up the river or back down the river. Gotcha, gotcha, to find, gotcha. To, to basically start all over and start looking for fish again in areas where you think they're going to be. And then this time of the year, they just won't be just in eddies. They'll be in slow moving current too. They'll be in areas where the current um, is running, is running slow, but not as fast as let's say the middle of the river is. And you can see that. And you can also tell by your, uh, when you're on your trolling motor, you'll get out in the current and it's like at 10, you know, your trolling motor is r- all the way up, ramped all the way up. And then as you start sliding over, uh, you'll notice it takes less and less power to hold. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, especially if you're in spot lock. Mm-hmm. You're like, well, this water's slower here. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, wham, there's a fish. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's where they are. And then depending on how, how high the water's gotten, they'll be closer to the shoreline. And mm-hmm. as the water falls, they'll push off the shoreline. Right. Interesting. And that's the key too, like you said, and going back to thinking that they're out of the wind, they're out of the winding holes, but that time it took them to come out of that deeper hole or pocket and start pushing up and moving up. There's somewhere, mm-hmm. you think of it this way too, there's somewhere between that deep wintering hole yeah. and that shallow eddy mm-hmm. you're talking about. There's somewhere between point A and point B. Mm-hmm. And, and in any given time too, they, they might push up. They or could like be anywhere, this hot yeah. water, they pushed up even further, maybe up on the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, if we're, you know, depending on high pressure or something, they might pull out to that deeper water just off that ledge. So I think it's also important to your point, like once you fish that area, before you maybe make a, a longer run, maybe just backing off again, mm-hmm. fish that next depth of water off uh, to see if maybe that's where they're kind of just pulled back and, yeah. you know, set down. And this time of year too, you'll find smaller fish sometimes just up on the shorelines. Mm-hmm. They're just, they're out and about. The water's gotten warm mm-hmm. and they, you know, they're trying to find their place in the river. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're, they're pretty aggressive. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, maybe you want to back off the shoreline a little mm-hmm. bit more. And then that's when you might find some larger mm-hmm. fish. When you say back off this time of year, like I, I used to know growing up when you're fishing in the heat of summer and it's at it's absolute lowest, those fish are finicky as snot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, are they generally always finicky on the river or are you able to get a little bit more up close and personal with them between like the winter time, the spring time, or is it just generally speaking, you back off as far and make as long a cast as possible? Yeah. If, if it depends on how clear the water is, I feel okay, like clarity. Gotcha. I mean, if it's crystal clear, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta make some long casts Okay. cause you'll spook them. Okay. Um, but if, if the water's stained, heavily stained borderline, like dirty looking water, but you're catching fish in, I mean, you can literally take advantage of that and you can catch them right next to the boat. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You can mm-hmm. get pretty close to the shoreline. In this time of year, what is the water clarity generally speaking? Is it like chalky? Is it gin clear? It's got some color to it. No, it's it's had some color to it this year. Okay, but but before, a couple of weeks ago, it was getting pretty clear. Mm-hmm. And um, mm. it's gonna take a while now. <laughs> yeah, it'll take a while. I'm now. Dirty it up again. So but, so when you do, um, get back out, you know, after this water level comes back down, what do you suspect you'll find, um, as you get closer to maybe uh, uh 
would you say they're going into a spawn fish? Yeah, the, be... the, the, the same pattern I was doing, mm -hmm. but they might be in different spots in the river. Mm -hmm. they, they might they might be in a, uh, another location, mm -hmm. or they they might hold there and, and wait for it to come down. But it mm -hmm. it's, it went up pretty high. Mm -hmm. So um, once you get out there, I would start fishing the shorelines. Okay, and then and, work back in pockets that. of water because mm -hmm. they're not going to want to stay in that real fast water. Mm -hmm. They're going to move out. Especially the spawn, like you know, it's going to happen eventually around here. And then I, I would, I would suspect this is probably their biggest time of the year. You know, I mean, this is the spawn. This yeah. is their, this is their time, and um, mm -hmm. they do wacky things. I mm -hmm. mean, they'll move. Mm -hmm. They'll move miles up a river mm -hmm. into tributaries to uh, find a spot to spawn. Mm -hmm. And that's why some of these areas in the river are void of fish. Hmm. They just, I mean, they just pack their bags and roll out. Hmm. And you're like, where in the world are these fish? And it's not because there's something wrong with the river. You know, nothing like nothing drastic like that. Smallmouth, they move, mm -hmm. and that's just what they do. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, you'll fish that area where, where you haven't been catching fish, and it's almost like someone uh, stocked the river again, full of full of smallmouth. That's very mouth. interesting. That's what's crazy because I remember one of our earliest interviews we did was with Neil, and it's mm -hmm. just so weird. Like you think winter time is probably the easiest time to fish the river because it's like mm -hmm. fine deep water yep. period. Mm -hmm. But then you go Correct. to the opposite summertime, and you literally there could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. And just the amount that they can migrate back and mm -hmm. forth is so much different than if you fish a Lake Frederick, which mm -hmm. is just like, it's smaller guys, but it's like 200 acres or whatever, 300 acres. Mm -hmm. They're there and you can mm -hmm. kind of bang that out. But if you're going to float the river, mm -hmm. you really need to logistically with a map or your phone Navionics mm -hmm. plan out some spots because I mean, dead water could be a mile plus stretch. So, and that's mm -hmm. a long way to float and you're trying to fish it. So it's mm -hmm. just good. It's a good time efficient way to think about your day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is very interesting because I hear from guys that are fishing these river tournaments and, and with the Shenandoah, you got the North and the South Fork. So the guys that run up, let's say they run up to South Fork and they have a good day on one day, but then the next week, like you're saying, or next day or, you know, the next time you're out, they don't find them up mm -hmm. there and they're all the way up the North now. But my question always is too, those fish may still be there. They just weren't eating. Mm hmm you yeah, know, but that can happen too. That could, but to your point, I have heard that a lot about fish, and it makes sense. No, no, we don't. Animals don't like they they move. We. I mean, move, I've heard numbers like four migrate. miles if yeah. it's possible wherever oh, yeah. the body of water is. Yeah, and they've tagged 40, fish 40 like miles. that, and they have. Yes, they have. They move, and and you got to keep that in mind. They're mm -hmm. swimming, and they decide they're going to pick up and go. And, but if if you're fishing a um a river uh, that has um dam systems and stuff like mm. that. Obviously, they can only go so far. Good point. And maybe they'll push all the way up to that. Correct. You know, or a small creek where it has a low water dam or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, they're only going to be able to go so far. That's a good. Like, have you ever fished a tail race before or anything like that? Uh, or just, I guess, behind a dam. And yeah. what is that fishing kind of like? Is it is it seasonal? Yeah, I have, but not not on the Potomac on um, a large lake. Oh, really? I have Grand Lake. Oh, that's freaking down awesome. Down below it. That's freaking awesome. So, uh, <laughs> what is it like? If only I remember fishing it um in the summertime um what happens is, is they open the gates up for whatever reason i guess to keep the water at a certain level and um the fish go right through the dam man really and uh they go down below and um air will fill up with water and as it as the water water level falls they get trapped in these these large pools of water oh cool and they can be very easy to catch okay yeah because I've seen people like behind like the dams of the Potomac River, mm -hmm. like just getting stacked up in there. And you think with the musky and the smallmouth stuff, yeah. like if they just. From like, what I understand, the walleye will will stack up. Uh, they'll go up all the way up to the, uh, the uh, low water dams on the Potomac, oh, and they'll okay. hold there, and um, you can catch them there too. And you got two things going for you there. You got food constantly moving through yeah. with mm -hmm. that current, and then in the summertime, it's good too because that the rocks and the moving water, the oxygenated content of that water is better. So. You know, that is a good really good technique. And to your point, I, I'm thinking, too, and putting this puzzle piece together of start here, start shallow, pull back, try your eddies, and, you know, try back. If that's not working, then to your question initially, then maybe make that run up into a creek, back of a creek, find a dam, mm -hmm. go up, push up to that dam, and just kind of, it's like a search. It's a search party to try to find where, where yeah, are Yeah, and don't think because you go fishing on the, the Potomac, Susquehanna, the Shenandoah, the Monocacy River, the Juniata, and you're in a certain stretch, don't think you're a terrible fisherman because you're not catching mm -hmm. fish. That's right. You're just not where the fish are. That's right. So you got to you gotta um, find another mm -hmm. spot to go to, go another mile mm -hmm. up the river. And if you are where fish, that's that whole adage too, of they're just not eating. So they, mm -hmm. yeah. you hear about the guys that do like to move a lot, 
uh, they're going to go find the ones that are eating. Yeah, there's always know. fish that want to want to yeah, eat somewhere. You want to find those fish. The fish you want to catch the ones that are eating. So, and that is a great segue because Jeff said he's going to come on every month, and we're going to be doing a fishing report. I think this is the, I guess, the first time we're going to be starting yeah. it. So, uh, yeah, Jeff, why don't you just, just take it away? Tell tell us whatever one you want to start with. Like, all right, well, the uh, Potomac River up until Thursday, it was um, it was running at a decent level. The water wasn't. Um, it was stained but it was in such a way that i on thursday i felt comfortable enough the water was 63 degrees i'm trying to remember what the uh what the gauge was reading i believe it was around five feet at the uh point of rocks gauge and uh they were chasing spinnerbaits for the first time that i saw oh, and that I, I tried and I, I felt confident enough because of the water clarity and how high the water was and sure enough they were uh they were nailing spinnerbaits mm. um so the, the water right now, it's gone up to uh, 18 feet at the, on the Potomac River wow. at the at both gauges, Edwards That's Ferry and Point of Rocks. Mm. It's reading about the same depth, the uh, Susquehanna gauge at Harrisburg's at uh, close to 12 feet, so like 11 something. Um, so it kind of just resets everything. And when the water falls back down and it's safe enough to go on the water, um, you know, it's good, the water's still going to be high mm -hmm. and fish the shorelines. Okay. Um, you know, hopefully the water temperature goes back up quick. And don't think because the water temperature goes from, I think it's like 53, 54 degrees right now, it goes back up to 60 degrees in two days that that's going to be good. Mm -hmm. You got to wait for it to, uh, mm -hmm. to um, have a, a steady, you know, uh, you know, a week or so. Stabilize. Oh, stable, stabilize. Yeah. Stable, yeah. And then uh, you'll find that they'll start biting okay. real well. So hopefully around Memorial Day weekend or a little bit before yeah, But that, the river's be completely back. blown yeah. out now. I mean, I've, I've fished it at some crazy levels and, uh, it's bad now, mm -hmm. but it falls out just as fast as it rises. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it'll be back down to a, a fish fishable level within a few days. Okay. Mm -hmm. As long as it doesn't affect the spawn, I think it's always good to have that. The alternative, you're better, you're better off having rain and water in the yeah. river than those years we've had that's dry. And then you get that drought, and then you just—it's not good for the fish. It's mm -hmm. not good for fishing. You can't. Get we've up been and down using. The river. We've been using though to um, add to, uh, you know, the Potomac and everything. And what I was doing last week, we've been using uh, four-inch swim baits. We've been fishing them on the bottom. We're not swimming, and we're fishing them on the bottom real slow. Hmm. We're using two and three-quarter-inch tubes. Uh, I've been using stuff that's green pumpkin colored, black color. Okay. Um, and um, the weight that I've been using on the jig heads uh it seems seems to me uh, the heavier the weight right now the better in some of these eddies and areas where the water we're fishing in um where the where the slow water where the still water meets the fast water uh i've gone up to a, a quarter ounce wow that is the heaviest and then eighth ounce is the lightest um but just fish it slow in the in the spinner baits i'm using something something like this war eagle half ounce and three eighth um uh, this this will this will catch fish right here. Hmm. So. Well, you, know, you said one eighth is generally your your. Or what, what's yeah. your Favorite size spinner bait if you had. To um, one? three eighth. Three eighths. Okay. Three eighths, and then um, uh, half ounce is the next one up, and I'll I'll use a half ounce if the water's fast, and then um, Thursday because the water was, the water was stained. It, it was good. I mean, it, it was it was it was a a good color, but it wasn't dirty. I'll use willow leaf blades. Like, like you see right here, mm -hmm. like this right here. And then as a, if the water gets dirty, I go to like Colorado blades or those turtle, mm -hmm. turtle back. Yeah. Whatever they call okay. those, uh, Colorado blades. They, mm -hmm. call, they have another name for them too, but uh, something that thumps a lot harder. Mm -hmm. You can go, you could, I could, I <clears> probably could have caught fish with, uh, chatter baits too. You, know, you talked about that jackhammer mm -hmm. bait. I, we probably could have caught them on those too, mm -hmm. but I have not tried, um, yet. I probably should have because they were, they were chasing, uh, Spinner baits, but spinner baits are easy. They don't get hung up real a lot. Uh, you can throw them up into grass and uh, you know debris in the water, mm -hmm. and they come right out clean. Uh, I should have used probably try some crank baits, but now we're gonna have to wait. 
mm. till the water comes back down. We'll mm. get there. We'll get there. And, and you guys might be thinking like, well, it's like three feet of water where he's fishing. Is he, he's using a three eighths half ounce spinnerbait. Yes, but the current's important. And I, mm. I, the reason I don't know why this popped in there. Last year, Steve Kennedy was fishing a Bassmaster event, and they had flooded conditions, and he was fishing the tail race. He was throwing a custom two and a half ounce spinnerbait back oh, there, just close. because the current was ripping so hard to get it mm. on the bottom. He told us that's a big spinnerbait. Like he told his cameraman, like if you fall off, drop the camera and kick your feet up, and I'll just come and get you because like the water was ripping so hard. Mm. He burnt through. I think he said he had six batteries in his boat because mm. where he's fishing, and he burnt them all that day. But he wow. had this massive bait. He said it was just because the current was ripping so mm. hard you needed that with the blades get it down there mm. so you're needing a heavier spinnerbait in current generally speaking compared to if you're fishing a pond just for the people at mm. home just to, if you wanted a little and, tips and the color i was using for the uh, spinnerbaits was a uh was white wasn't exactly this color but white um and a gold goldish okay color with, with brown in it something something with natural colors now what's your feel because i know everyone this is like a great argument in the fishing world Trailer hook, a trailer bait, a trailer bait on your spinner bait or nothing. What is your vibe and where do you? I fall fish them just like this, just like that. Okay. Now the only time I'll, I'll change up and I do it because because I'm guiding is um, and I want people to catch fish. If I notice because I'll watch them uh, fish in the bait and I'll know I'll, I'll see see the fish swat at the the spinner bait and um, if they keep swatting at it and they're just not hooking up, all you need to do is add a, add a um, trailer hook and oh, it's so they're easy. not coming off. You know, yeah. what I mean, they're 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 hooking themselves. Because I've always was curious with, but I've never yeah. used a uh, like a trailer, something like that. Okay. On the back of a spinnerbait, I, I but I like use it, it on a chatterbait for whatever reason. I was gonna I say feel I, like I, I do I, like it because I think that your blades are giving you flash and vibration, and then your mm -hmm. skirt, you know, is the body, and I do like having that tail at the back end to give it that as a fish is swimming, as a fish swims you know that tail action to to move that's you're kind of mimicking that displacement of water and i don't know it may not make a difference because some guys too will just put a just like a not a worm like a, a spinnerbait trailer which it's, is just like a uh, double tail like a little rubber. double yeah. tail yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's real thin and it doesn't gonna not gonna give a lot of vibration so yeah so I, i've seen them i've seen them hit the spinnerbaits and there's probably nothing you can do about this but i've seen them hit and they'll grab a hold of the blade have you ever experienced yeah. that? And they'll come all the way back to the boat mm -hmm. and you'll see, you're like, man, they're not even hooked. And they have a blade in their mouth mm -hmm. and then they see you and they let go. Well, that, that's the, that's what I was told. Cause when my, so my brother got to fish a high school, uh, I think it was a regional tournament back in the day when the Bassmaster did re -school, regionals for high school and they were at Lake Champlain and they were fishing spinnerbaits, but they were painting the blades. Mm -hmm. And they said, that's the reason smallmouth wreck spinnerbaits is because if you get a big smallmouth mm -hmm. and you think, well, my, my, my blades all mangled up. That's because one of them probably smacked the blade mm -hmm. and grabbed it. And mm -hmm. that's why they just destroy mm -hmm. the wiring of a spinnerbait. Mm -hmm. And if, if you, um, uh, my advice is to, uh, with the spinner baits, is if you have to bend that thing back a few times, if you have had a few fish or mm -hmm. real nice fish, uh, let's say also you have to deal with catfish that day because they're just hitting like, I have that mm -hmm. early June, late May. Uh, those catfish, I guess they get ready to spawn. They get real aggressive. Channels do. Mm -hmm. They just mangle these things up. Oh, yeah. But if you mm -hmm. bend them back a couple times that day, mm -hmm. don't keep using it because you'll end up catching a big smallmouth and he'll break that uh, spinner oh, bait that and, he, and, he's, and he's gone. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the spinner bait does have an expiration on it. I mean, it's not because it's metal wire that it'll last. It, they'll, they'll break that that mm -hmm. uh, that wire. Have you ever caught a catfish on a spinner bait? I've caught them a lot of things. A jig, I've caught them a jig, caught them on, yeah, um, yeah like a crank. I mean, bait. they absolutely annihilate spinner baits. Oh, I, 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 I don't doubt hard. it. I, yeah, I, I caught one on a jitterbug one time on the river. <laughs> really? Yeah, I Did you really? I, oh my gosh, I was wading out and and I was throwing an old school jitterbug and I was waiting. I was waiting up to a bridge. And I was going to get out and walk back, and it, it was getting dark. I remember getting dark and and I was catching some. It was in the summertime and dark had set in. Like it, it was dark and I said I started to step out of the river because so I got to my where I was getting out and I thought one more cast, chucked it out and you know walk, 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 wham. Like I thought, Seriously. oh my gosh, took it down, went down with it. And initially, you know, I'm thinking, man, powerful smallmouth. It ended up being like a three foot catfish. So, yeah, I mean, Oof. they are. They're they're so very aggressive. Um, but I don't know and if spinner bait's been one. And as the water warms up too, since we're talking about, um, you know, a fishing report here, just keep in mind these fish are going to start leaving the water too. I mean, they're going to start. We we caught a real nice one on Thursday. This fish was just a little over 20 inches. And uh, it was off of Scrub Island. It was about 25, 
yards down from the actual uh, where the eddy is. Mm -hmm. And this fish hit hit the guy's spinnerbait, and uh, I had to shut the trolling motor off because I didn't want him fighting that fish in the current and the trolling motor mm -hmm. fighting us. Uh, that fish jumped twice, and both times he jumped, I was like, "Oh my gosh, he's coming off!" You mm -hmm. know, because that's just how that's what they do. Yeah. I mean, this fish came out of the water completely out of the water twice in sixty-three mm -hmm. degree water. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just awesome. make sure your hooks are sharp, um, and uh, whatever techniques you have to make sure they're not they're not leaving the water. You know, people drop their um, their uh, rod tips down sometimes. Um, you know, just uh, make sure your drag is. Uh, set so that the hooks don't rip out of their mouth mm -hmm. because i mean in 60 70 degree water i mean they're probably fighting harder than any other time mm -hmm. that they would mm -hmm. throughout the year yeah because in the winter time that's they're, good tip, they're yeah. lethargic they dig they, mm -hmm. they fight real good but they're not fighting like they do in mm -hmm. 65 degree water i'm sorry you might have already covered this i had a stroke what size line for the spinnerbait do you do you recommend um line yeah um i'm using it um you're not using an eight pound or anything you're going no no i'm using up, right i'm using um Anywhere between ten and twelve pound okay. uh, monofilament. Oh, okay. Monofilament line, and then um, for the uh, for you know the plastics and stuff, I use usually use eight pound fluorocarbon. But the uh, my idea with the spinner baits, the crank baits, and stuff like that is um, with the monofilament it stretches, mm. and then I have it tied to a uh, uh, braided line. Braided line. It's oh, you go leader. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm doing a leader of. Uh, uh, a rod's length of leader. So if the if the rod's seven feet long, I'm using about seven gotcha. feet of leader. And when they, when they hit it, it's kind of like a shock absorber. I feel like it's not mm. going to just rip out of their mouth. Yeah. Um, but it's always worked for me. A lot the, of people are, are starting does. to do that, especially like a braid to leader mm. thing. I think tactical bass a lot does that because at first it saves you money. You don't have to like spool up eighteen, mm -hmm. you know, eighteen no. pound fluorocarbon all the way up and spend a thousand dollars. So yeah, that, that's really neat. I feel like spinnerbait's making a comeback too. Like, and yeah. I, maybe people have always been throwing them. I know I used to love a spinnerbait, and then they're very like situational. The, they are, but I mean, like with a jackhammer, I think came out too. I think that really there was a big swift oh, yeah. swing shift in in yeah. that. But I think that's kind of. I mean, it still catches fish. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong, but I think we kind of like, oh, let's pick this, you know, this up. But you're right, it is situated. But when it, I still say, when that bite is on, that's oh, a great oh my gosh, bite. it's such a fast way to fish, mm -hmm. and it's such a fun way and mm -hmm. they just strike these things in such a violent manner mm -hmm. when they when they hit them yeah and um i even but, like hearing the chime when you throw them like you hear the when they're, then they're chiming together and they hit the water just that yeah. sound i don't know just and, and it's it's i still even today i've you know all the fishing i do and everything, i just can't believe they hit something with all these metal blades and stuff mm -hmm. on it i mean they'll hit this thing right when it hits the water you mm -hmm. throw it up on, um, on high water up in some grass mm -hmm. and they'll just nail it right when it hits the water mm -hmm. like think, they're chasing yeah. like a dog chases a, a frisbee <laughs> Yeah, it's no, incredible. No, I mean there is. I think there's a lot to that too. When they're, when they're up there, I think they can see it hitting. I mean, uh, I think they see stuff hit the water, and then they're they're in that tack. Mode. You know, and your mindset is when you throw something like this, you don't want them to get a good look at it. You want them to, uh, you mm -hmm. know, you want it once it hits the water, you want to get it going, mm -hmm. and then you can slow it down. Mm -hmm. But you want to get it going, and then uh, it's just amazing. Usually, if they're biting one something like this real well, with the first few casts. Or f first few cranks, I'm sorry. Yeah, they they'll nail it. Smallmouth will. Hmm. Right. Yeah. No, that that that's good stuff. That's really is good stuff there. And like I think you're right. The spinner base something I need to get back into the rotation mm -hmm. because I've gotten off of it. And again, you know, there's only I only got two hands and I can have one rod, right. so it's so hard to right. pick a bait. But so yeah, Potomac River. So like, what's the next one? What's the next stop that we're gonna go on in this destination? Oh, for um for uh the fishing uh, report. Fishing report. The Susquehanna. I've been up on the Susquehanna, Susquehanna. and um. I've been using nothing but plastics up there. Okay. So far, that water's a little bit colder right now, or was than the Potomac was, and um, I've been catching them in the uh, Juniata, up on the shorelines and stuff like hmm. that, in slow, slow moving water. The areas that I'm catching them in, usually the bottom has some. It's pretty hard. There's some rocks, chunk rocks and stuff like that, and the water on the shoreline is moving a lot slower than the the main, the middle of the river is. Okay. Um, anywhere. Uh, and and in the um, the current breaks, where around the current seams, they've seemed to be there, and hmm. they've been at the top of the eddies for me okay. on the Susquehanna, and I've been catching them uh, on the islands, um, in the gra grass beds, uh, behind the grass beds, you know, uh, in in the current seams. Hmm. 
It's so weird, like river to river, like mm -hmm. how different they are the way they and set as, up. And as far as farthest down I I fished so far this year on the on the Susquehanna, I've been just above uh, Fort Hunter. Okay, that's where the uh, statue is, mm -hmm. Statue of Liberty is. Be people know by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then all the way north, um, probably just below Montgomery Ferry, and then I'll go up into the uh, Juniata, mm -hmm. three or four miles. Oh wow! Okay, so it's it's a decent stretch of river that I've been fishing. That's, that's a big stretch. Yeah. It's <laughs> a decent size stretch. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're getting ready to spawn as well. If they haven't already in certain spots, but I, I think they're getting ready to. Okay. That's but I still, yeah. Like you Everyone said. has their own opinion about that too, by the way. No. And I was going to say, and I like, when I listen to you, you say where I'm finding them, which is kind of cool because mm -hmm. it doesn't rule out other things. Other people, somebody might have been up there. Well, I was catching them on a, crankbait and you know whatever it doesn't mean that the other thing's not going to work and that's oh that, that doesn't about. mean that people aren't hammering them on spinnerbaits well somewhere. listen I yeah just we know that you go in yeah. these tournaments and you're like and this guy says he caught him on this and this guy says he caught him on this and this and it because i truly do believe different things will work yeah and mm -hmm. so um yeah trying different things and um not there's general rules of thumb but you know always being open-minded to be able to try and here's something else and, to think about too for some reason i believe that the uh fish on the susquehanna they relate to cold water a lot better mm -hmm. than the fish in the Potomac. That doesn't mean mm -hmm. you can't catch them in the wintertime in the Potomac. Mean, yeah. But the fish on the Potomac River seem to tra transition from summer to fall into winter mm -hmm. a lot easier mm -hmm. than they do coming out of the winter. They just, for some reason, just do not like it. You're, and, you, they, and they come out, and when they transition, yes. um, they just they're um, they can be tough to catch. But in the Susquehanna, it just seems like uh, the transitions – are um the the fish are just as just as aggressive yeah from fall to spring yes and, and i think it's interesting because i of course i grew up fishing in the summer only on the river but it, since working here in the beginning opening it you realize that your diehard river rats their their time off is summer which is is backwards of what a lot of people think they think well summer that's when you're going to be on the water because yeah. the, the air temperature is nicer mm. But really, if you're a smallmouth guy, your winter time, yeah. your winter yeah, um, time, like you say, your fall, your winter, your spring are your best time. Summer, a lot of guys will, will you're talking about minnows earlier, like, and there's different type, types of fishermen. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying they're wrong either to fish in the summertime, but, mm -hmm. but your diehard look going after big, big smallmouth, you know, that summertime is kind of like the time, their break because they're going to hit it up hard in the fall, winter, spring. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, For big pe or small. Mouth. People don't think about it, and I don't know why they don't. I, I tell people this, and uh, maybe one day it'll, it'll, it, you know, it'll be something that people talk about, but but this this area, this region, the Shenandoah, the Susquehanna, the Potomac, um, you know, the Allegheny, all these different rivers, Monocacy mm -hmm. River, all these, these, these uh, smallmouth rivers, you can fish them 365 days a year Correct. here. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, you know, depending on whether or not that river's frozen, that's and right. you know, the rivers don't freeze every every winter. That's right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, you can fish them 365 days a year. That's right. And, it's crazy. And there's just you know, winter time is probably the colder months are probably mm -hmm. the best time best, to yeah. uh, catch just real big small. Big, mouth. Yeah, you might not get to get the numbers, but back to what you're saying to spawn too. That's what I'm hearing and learning is. You may have a month window, give or take, uh -huh. you know, and, and you're right. It's, it's, uh, you go out and see, you might see some beds and you might see a fish that has pulled up and she's laid her eggs, but that doesn't mean all of them have. And yeah. so don't, you can't look at this. It's, it's a big window of time. And yeah. depending on the water, the body of water, the area, the temperature, there's a lot of yeah. factors, but, um, it's, it's not like one week period that yeah, all this the, is going to mm, take place it's the, happening over a full month the generic time is like march i mean sorry may 1st to like june 15th correct is i that would agree with time. that and, and we're we're just getting into that yeah i agree <clears throat> so because we have high water i don't i don't think it's a big issue mm, right now right um i mean it's i mean we just came out of april mm. and april's when we have a lot of rain mm. okay so i think um i you know the the uh nighttime temperatures are going to mm. be higher mm -hmm. in the next couple weeks so and I, I pay attention to the nighttime temperatures more so than mm -hmm. the day, because that that's going to tell you if the mm -hmm. if how stable the uh, water temperatures will be, mm -hmm. you know. And as the day gets longer, you know, as the right, summer goes good. on, um, that's exactly right. 
Yeah. You know, it, it'll, it, it'll, it'll stabilize that way too. I was kind of laughing thinking too, like if you, and I'd always try to relate to ourselves and it's kind of like, yeah, we hit, you get into April and mentally you're thinking I'm, we're out of March. So it's going to start warming up here. And yeah, then you no. get to May, you're like, but so the fish are the same way where like, you're going to get, we're going to go outside. We're going to go. And then you had a, a snowstorm in April. Yeah. And then, like, oh, now it's just like, man, it's been cold. Like, it's rainy <laughs> yeah. and cold. I don't know if you guys paid attention to what that storm was doing, but it was rotating on mm -hmm. radar. Really? Literally, it was coming as it was as, was, as it was passing West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And that they got some serious flooding I in think there's uh, a central parts stuff. of uh, yeah. West Virginia. Wow. And there's some tornadoes in Tennessee or something as like it, that? Yeah. yeah. It's come up. As it was coming um, east and passing over West Virginia and it got close to Maryland, if you watch it, it starts rotating. It doesn't even, it just doesn't keep going east. It wants to hang out and, and it starts spinning. So, I mean, it, it, we get some, we get some nasty rainstorms yeah. out um, on, on the east coast here. Mm -hmm. No, no, we And do. it seems like all the storms pass through Maryland. Mm -hmm. They don't go, they, they can't go through southern Virginia or mm -hmm. the northern part um, above Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. No, they come right through here. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I guess that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the Monocacy River. Uh, could, could you talk a little bit about that and just kind of like how that's fishing right now or in general? Well, the Monocacy River, I usually start fishing that. Um, in the summertime, I'll go up in there when there's enough water. Um, it's it's a cool river. I mean, it starts in Pennsylvania. Two oh, creeks wow. come together. It's, it's roughly 50, 50 miles long, 52 okay. miles long. Um, and... Uh, Ever since I was a kid, it, it was known for for smallmouth, and it's kind of a river people have forgotten about. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, it has big smallmouth in it. It's got big largemouth in it too. Largemouth, really? Yeah, it's got largemouth because it, it just huh. doesn't it doesn't run that fast. Okay, it's, it's a real lazy river. Okay, I mean it's it's borderline a a, a large creek. Now, you know, do you launch if you were going to fish the Monocacy? Do you launch in the Potomac and go up, or do you actually launch in the Monocacy? Um, if I was probably going to fish the, if, if that was the spot, I was like, I'm, I'm, we're going to fish the Monocacy first this morning. I would probably go out of the mouth of Monocacy. Okay. And I'll go up. And okay. I only go up um, two or three miles. Okay, not, not, um, not too terrible. Because uh, if the water's any higher than that, and I can get up, up underneath like Route 28 and keep going, it's probably browned out. Wow. The river doesn't do well with a lot of water. Okay. And um, it just, it, it gets muddy real quick. But if you can hit that river, like I've hit it before where the Potomac is brown and the, it's very rare and the Monocacy is clear. Hmm. Hmm. There's fish all up in the Monocacy in, in, in the warmer months. That's so cool. They push up in there. And there's an area where I can I can fish um, in, uh, I mean, man, you can catch 25, 30 fish in there. It's so crazy listening to you and Travis eating yes. all this other stuff about like, you can be like thing. one part of the river is just terrible. Like yes. river monsters, yeah. you can't do it. But then you literally just go this creek gin clear. It's just so yeah, crazy absolutely. how yeah. water drains. I mean, drains. that's like the stars have to line up and everything yeah. has to work perfectly for that for that kind of scenario to happen. And I um, found the past couple of years, um, I've been fishing the Monocacy a lot more and actually taking uh, customers up in there. Uh, fall is a really good time. Hmm. They, they push up in there mm -hmm. and uh, they'll hang out around the aqueduct. The Monocacy River has the largest aqueduct ever mm -hmm. built on the Sino Canal too. I did not which know is, that. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a very historic river. It, you know, has a lot to do with the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just cool to go there and uh, maybe if you have a canoe or a kayak and uh, drift it. Hmm. But I, uh, I have a, a friend of mine that fishes it. He fishes it a lot. And um, I'll tell you, a, a good bait on the, on the Monocacy River in the summertime, believe it or not, it's a beetle spin. You guys know what a beetle spin is? I was talking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah it's a like small beetle spin. A small spinner bait. Be beetle beetle with spin um, with like an eighth, eighth ounce uh, jig head on it. Mm -hmm, with a grub. Oh, that's yeah, cool. with a grub or uh, a small um, swim bait on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We used to throw, I was telling earlier. We I grew up throwing those on the yeah. river in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. It's that's a that's a cool bait mm -hmm. to go up in there and uh, mm -hmm. you can catch a lot of fish. And it, what you were you saying? Catch big ones too. Oh yeah. And you were saying too, like the water clarity, either Sus Susquehanna, man, that thing, that thing will literally have, it'll have a line down the yeah. middle of the river. That's crazy. Fortunately, where, where that right river is so wide. Side, it takes wide. a lot of yeah. water yeah. to completely blow it out. But that's something that you, we don't talk enough about either is like water temperature, you know, and level, but the clarity, getting the right clarity, um, finding that right clarity that suits whatever style you're fishing too, mm -hmm. I know sometimes can make all the difference in the world. So that too, searching to find that that green water, whatever, whatever clarity you're looking for. If it's dingy, yeah. dark, not saying you can't catch them there, but kind of searching. If you have one of those situations where like the, let's say the Monocacy River is, it's 
pushing like clear water out. Mm-hmm. It's, it's real good looking mm-hmm. water in the Potomac is, is brown or mm-hmm. whatever creek it may be. If it's, if it's large enough, if it's a large enough tributary mm-hmm. and it influences the r- river enough, if you go out into that dirty water and start fishing where that, mm-hmm. where that clear water is coming out, mm-hmm. you'll be surprised at how many fish are lined up They're on that shoreline. There, yeah. um, even further down. I mean, hmm. um, tight to the shoreline though, mm-hmm. but they'll sit in there because mm-hmm. that water's clear. So mm-hmm. that, that, whether were, you and I believe it or not, it is You're exactly right. So that mud line is basically where they're going to be humped out, uh, like right up against, or just the clear water? No, they'll, they'll the be in the mud line too, like where the uh, okay. where there's a confluence of two- uh, Gotcha. Um, mm-hmm. Two tributary, a, a tributary in the, in the river meeting. Almost where they're combined, where that water's mixing almost. Okay. And then too, like. and then the uh, the downside of it, where it's where it's mixing into like mm-hmm. the monocacy mixing into the Potomac. So in general, just just for the scenario, it doesn't have to be there. Mm-hmm. Are you are you hitting those eddies that are in those key points? Or yeah. Just in general, you're just fishing that line. No, no, no. You would you fish tight. You you'd fish as close up. You know, you'd throw your lure. It more than likely it would be like a spinner bait in okay. that situation, and um, or a large swim bait. You know, depends, and. Uh, you're hitting uh, little those little micro eddies or small okay. eddies, and you're hitting little little spots or in between where there's trees coming up, and they'll, they'll sit in there. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a really good tip because I never mm-hmm. even thought of that yeah. too. Like those fish are smart enough to know when that mm-hmm. water changes, and they're gonna hit those keys. And spots. then just mm-hmm. because the water's muddy on one side and clear on the other, you can still catch fish mm-hmm. on the muddy side. Right. Mm-hmm. But usually it's a spot where you're pretty confident because they're backed up. Because when the water's dirty like that, mm-hmm. they back up the structure. Okay. Back up to like cement or mm-hmm. rock or something like that mm-hmm. that's in the water, and they they hold tight to it because I, mm-hmm. I I suppose the reason why is they don't want to get eaten either, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they're they you know it's it's for for their own protection. No, that but that's, um, that's a good tip. But yeah, I mean, don't be afraid to go to the muddy side of the river, right? And try spots where you know there's some big rocks, mm-hmm. you know, or a cement wall or a drainage there or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. It, I don't know why they wouldn't leave and go to the other side. Mm-hmm. But they they don't. No, yeah, I mean that's I didn't even think of that. That completely blew my mind about that. Like just not only fishing that edge, but just within that edge. Because I was always taught for like lakes and stuff. You're just fishing that line no matter what. But mm-hmm. I feel like just fig whatever cl- cover or key kill zones are closest to that. That's what you want to hit. Not necessarily the line itself, but what if there's a tree a foot off to this side? They're still going to use that tree because it's the closest mm-hmm. point of reference mm-hmm. to that line. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really interesting. And then um uh. I'll probably go up in a size of uh, plastic bait. Like if you were just using a three inch swim bait on the clear side, you go over to the uh, muddier side, you want something that's a little bit bigger. And I, I feel like it pushes the water around a little bit more. Okay. And, um, you know, instead of a three inch bait, maybe a four inch bait. When would you use a crankbait? What does a crankbait bite generally, generally speaking, you can get good? I, I like using it. crankbaits the same situation with, um, with spinner baits. You got um, uh, stained water. When the water's high on the river, crankbaits work. Okay. Um, I think there's very situational too. So it's but I'm, it yeah. doesn't mean you can't go out there in clear water and just throw one out in the middle of the river, and something will come out from under a rock and grab yeah. it. But I, I think for them to be effective, you have to have the right situation. So it's very dependent. It's just like a spinner bait. They're interchangeable basically on when they're going to. Yeah, be I, I think work. so. I, I feel like um, uh, if you can get a good bite on a spinner bait, you'll catch fish on a crankbait. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thrown in those in those same areas that I talk about with the spinner bait, but spinner bait just doesn't get hung up like a, a crankbait can. That's you true. Know? That's that is really true. Um but uh rattle traps another one that'll work. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I never would have thought of that for smallmouth. Yeah. Right, right up on the rocks and stuff like that and get it going. Usually they they'll they'll nail them right before, you know, the first couple cranks of the reel. Okay. Yeah. But mm-hmm. smaller, I like using smaller um Rattle traps. Okay, yeah. You know the one uh, fourth. Rapala makes one. Rapala. Makes this. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you guys have it in your store or not, but it's a smaller uh, rattle trap, <clears throat> and I just use uh, natural colored ones. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. So they're actually here. We have something like this. this is about as big as I would go. It's usually be smaller, but but they one just like this. Too. And this says it's a booyah, but something just like mm-hmm. that size. Okay. And smaller. Oh wow! So you're really getting smaller. And yeah. are you just just burning that back to the boat then when you're throwing that? Are you are you trying yeah. to hang it up along the bottom? Or? No, because they hang up yeah, okay. uh, on the river. They do. Maybe some people have their own opinions about it, but um, mm-hmm. man, they're gonna get snagged. They're gonna grab anything and everything. So you just want to keep them just above the the, okay. um, the bottom of the river. And you can you can vary your retrieve. You can even when you throw it out, 
get it going and then pull it up, let it hmm. fall down and keep going. Yo-yo it, okay. You know, yo-yo it a little bit or um, throw it out and then pull it, you know, you know, like a, a sweeping motion, pull it real hard one time and rip it through the water Okay. and then let it settle down and start uh, reeling again. If you have a real fast retrieving reel, you can slow it down and speed it up real quick. Ooh, okay. I like that idea. And then yeah. that'll get them going. But like I said, usually they're going to nail those within the first few cranks. Hmm. Because you're, you're throwing at targets with them, you know? You're throwing it near a tree or near a rock or something like mm -hmm. that. Or uh, an area. I would consider a large area, an area that's 10 feet long a target. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you know there's rocks in there. But you're just not randomly just throwing them in the water. You want a, somewhere to throw at them. You want a, an area to throw these at. Mm -hmm. Just like a crankbait or a chatterbait or um, whatever other hard bait you can think of. A jerk bait. Yeah, there's an area to throw them. Yeah, in do you target. like to throw jerk baits year round, or where? like I, I like throwing them. Time, but like I like throwing them in the fall. Okay. Through the winter, I've caught fish in uh, in the high 30s, 30 degree water, with crank with uh, jerk baits, and uh, in the spring, and then you can use them in the in the summer and, and stuff like that. But I don't tend to use those uh, use them then. I just like as long as like I can get it back clean because I know the river can get grassy too. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing, mm -hmm. especially if you're trying to search for them, like because that's a great mm -hmm. search tool for smallmouth. Yeah, you mm -hmm. get around them, you're gonna find them. Well, that original uh, Rapala repeller, whatever, too. That the original <laughs> that floats on top. Yeah, is those are always a great, you know, river yeah, I have bait not too. Used that because in a long time. and they yeah. the blue seem to be they're made of balsa wood. Yeah, yeah, and the the silver and the black, but also the blue. Is also very good, but the, the thing with that is it's going to stay on the top. But when you're fishing those shallow, like you're talking about, like up shallow, but the the rip whether you're going to rip it or just reel it, but getting it to dive down and then then let it float back up. I mean, I remember that as a thing kid using be, those. That, it's dynamite. Mm -hmm. It's still it's, and this is what amazes me about this industry too is that thing is still so very effective, and it's it's um, it's so effective and. It works, but we don't throw it. Like I bought them at a yard sale. Like I bought a couple of them because I liked them so much, but mm -hmm. I don't throw them a whole lot. Deep. I don't even throw them a whole myself. In the summertime, before you get grass in the river, if you um, um, if you have kids on your boat, mm -hmm. you can troll them behind the boat, right? And uh, a smallmouth will crush them. Oh, absolutely. Some days are just they hammer them. But those I remember as a kid fishing the Rappahannock River and using those. Mm -hmm. And those things, they're they're uh, they're great baits. Yeah, and they're they're good for summertime as it as it warms up. But they're yeah. also because they're subsurface too, though, and you're going to get it down just under under mm -hmm. that. You know, it 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 honestly works any time of the year. The size I like to use, it's called an F seven, the one you're talking about. F7. Yes, I yes, guess it stands for floating. Yep, you're but exactly it's called right. an F seven, and it's about three inches long. Yep, and then there's a four inch version, and I, I mm -hmm. believe that one's like an, uh, maybe it's an F eight or something like mm -hmm. that. I don't know, but. The F7 is the mm. uh, size I like going with. The black and silver. Yep, black and silver. But like, see, there's also a blue that that I know has been popular around here mm -hmm. uh, that guys use. And um, and you look at all those jerk baits over there, and you can look down through there. And of course, Meg Bass, and they're all good. I mean, mm -hmm. there's not a. There's, there Rapala always, makes there's, a good one. There's coming out with some new ones and different things, and and they will catch fish. There's no doubt in my mind. But it just amazes me how you go back to the kind of the oldies but goodies. The key though to those uh, jerk baits. In the winter time, you want suspending ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want the ones that that suspend because mm -hmm. you could throw them out. Um, like this time of year too, when the water is still going up and down and fluctuating, and you're still really in the low 60s, mid 50s, you could throw those out behind mm -hmm. the boat and just let them. Mm -hmm. You can catch fish. Mm -hmm. You throw them out, and if you have a rod holder, you just put your rod in the rod holder, and they'll they'll uh, they'll sit in the water and just let do this. Let the current work them. And mm -hmm. uh, a minute or two, you know, if you're in a certain mm -hmm. spot and two three minutes mm -hmm. small mouth will come up and grab them oh absolutely with my adhd i don't know if i have the patience for that. no <laughs> but you, you throw that and you fish with something else mm. and you just leave it out you almost fish okay. with like live bait gotcha 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 so yeah. I, i'm not a buddhist monk i don't but, have that kind of patience i mean yeah. the key with and here's the thing too again goes back to getting locked into like well okay jerk bait cold water cold water cold water and yes they'll you can catch them oh, in yeah. cold water but you know caden showed me up at the lake he, he caught you know i said what'd you catch it on and he's and he said jerk bait I said, jerk bait you know summertime and i said why'd you go with the jerk bait he said because they were suspended at you know in 10 yeah. foot of water i'm like oh, genius yeah. because the fish are suspended there and so why not you now the key too is you can always work these things faster now this time yeah, of year too like, so you know mm -hmm. a faster the, yeah. type of reaction bite not the long pause and wait so don't bass I mean, masters hurt us because they told us a jerk bait only works yes when the water's cold. yeah and that's and i've heard that too and and um and that's a 
that's a bait you can use 365 oh, days a year. But we never did. No, I never did. Yeah, it's like, cause like you said, you bought into that. Well, it's only winter time. Well, no, yeah. it's not. You can throw it any time. You can throw it year round. Just like you're saying with this stuff. Mm -hmm. This stuff, you know, can be thrown literally year around. Mm -hmm. um, a, a tube is a 365 day absolutely. year uh, bait. Oh, that's a, so we've asked everyone the same question. So mm -hmm. gun to your head, tube or Ned rig? What camp are you in? Probably with are you team tube, team Ned rig? Probably a tube. Probably a tube. It seems like it's yeah. a split right Trust now. Trust me though, we've been catching some really nice fish this spring on Ned rigs. But I mean the, the tube came out before the Ned rig. Yeah, yeah. And um it's it's still caught more fish than the Ned rig ever has, you know. It's just I love asking. But that, that Ned rig's a killer. It, it is. And it's like, is it a confidence thing? Is it a size? Probably thing? confidence. Like, but um there's times where we'll, we'll just throw Ned rigs. Is like what do you, is there a certain situation you're looking for, or is like what? No, nah, I, I guess they just key in on that um, the profile of the bait. Okay, mm -hmm. I would imagine, but uh, two and three quarter inch tube is a is a killer on the uh, on on the river, man. What's the biggest tube you can get away with for smallmouth? I mean, do you go those big old flipping tubes, or is it like you a mean two and uh, a half like on the river? Yeah, like the I would Hannah think I would think Potomac probably or... um, three three and uh, a half three and half, three, yeah. three, really? three wow three inch or so mm -hmm. before you maybe start scaring the fish away. They're okay. just like I'm not eating that. Wow. Who but, is it? X, uh, not X lures. There's one that's, I should know it, but it's a, it's a tube. It, it is a bigger tube and it's got a different, different ends on it, uh -huh. but it's a little bigger profile and actually they're very good for. But don't get me wrong. If you're river. talking about just fishing them off the bottom, probably three inch and below, but there's probably some people that'll tell you, no, they probably swim them through the water at like right. four, almost three and a half, four inches. Well, here's They'll reality. Probably get bites here's reality too i mean you're mimicking a crayfish so yeah you know those they'll eat a small crayfish they'll eat a big crayfish and there's all sizes of crayfish in that river so yeah um and, and the idea of big fish big smallmouth are going to eat big too so um but these baits right now you can't go wrong with um fishing on the uh, is nine inches long that's the wrong one so stretching yeah. makes a four and a half inch so i guess this is the biggest you can probably get by a, a regular commercial yeah plane. you can't go wrong huh. though right now fishing on the river and the rivers we spoke about right uh, today with um with a uh, i'm using a four inch um three inch to four inch swim bait mm -hmm. okay uh you know the three eighth to a half ounce uh spinner bait two and three quarter inch tubes i'm using uh, and the colors i'm using with the plastics i'm just sticking with like i said green pumpkin mm -hmm. and black and if the green pumpkin doesn't work, we'll try black. Mm -hmm. If the black doesn't work, we'll try green pumpkin. I mm -hmm. I've honestly the last two years gotten on to black more. Um, mm -hmm. Like one of the trick yeah. worms I used at the chick, it was just a black or I think it's a black grape trick worm. Mm -hmm. It's just uh -huh. I think it's a silhouette. Like, yeah, there's something about that silhouette. darker color yeah. that really works. I agree. But uh, Jeff, it's always awesome to have you on. This is I, I every time I keep saying this to Jared. Every time we do this, we learn something, mm -hmm. and I always feel like I come away with, with more knowledge with this. Mm -hmm. um, do you got anything else? Yeah, just um, you know, if you're wanting to book a trip on, you know, maybe you've not you fished these other rivers, but you haven't fished the Potomac and or Susquehanna. Um, you know, look Jeff up uh, or the Monocacy River or, or the Juniata, depending on what time of year it is yeah. for me. Shallow water. Where can they find you? Shallowwaterfishingadventures.net. Um, my telephone number is 301-820-5378. Um, and my email address is shallowwaterfishingadventures at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And also, um, by mid to late summer, I'll have a uh, online shop open. It's called SWFA Baits. Um, and uh, you'll be able to purchase uh, stuff I make that I use on my guide trips. But I'll also be selling name brand stuff. Mm -hmm. And that name brand stuff is what I use on my trips. So, um, you know, so start looking for that. Mm -hmm. And you end. got a good newsletter too. So if you get signed yeah. up online, it'll mm -hmm. send you a newsletter. So yep. that's another good way to kind of stay in tune. They'll send that out and you kind of read through it and see what's going on. Yeah. And, and the and, best way to do that, if you want to get on the newsletter is, um, you can, um, uh, text me to that number that I, um, I just gave, mm -hmm. or you can just, uh, email me the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, your email address mm -hmm. and I'll add you to the list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. But the, it's, it's a small emailer, like a newsletter. I call it uh, SWFA Outdoor Journal. It's just, a, um, I mean, sometimes it'll have one story on it. Sometimes it'll have two or three. Mm -hmm. um, I'll talk about the, the baits I have for sale. And, uh, you know, uh, it's a quick read. And, you know, five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Nothing big. And it, you know, just can't, kind of keeps you up to date. I'll mm -hmm. have, sometimes I'll have a fishing report on there about how we're catching uh, the smallmouth. 
Good I was just stuff. thinking too, if like, um, you know, how important it is to support those in this industry? Um, yeah. when I say industry, it's, it's, it's the guides, it's the bait shops, it's yeah. the, you know, local bait makers and manufacturers, guys yeah. working in a garage. Um, but the other thing I was thinking too, like, it's one of those things too, if you have a family member that likes to fish and they've, you know, and maybe they haven't even been out in a while, mm -hmm. you know, give him a call and he can hook you up uh, and you can, you can, I'm sure you could settle on the date later. In other mm -hmm. words, I don't know if you do gift cards, but the idea I that do. you can make a connection there, get a gift card, you know, you got Father's Day coming up or, you know, for Christmas or a birthday, it'd be a nice, a different little gift, uh, you know, to, to give to somebody, um, that might yeah. enjoy getting out on the water. And sometimes that's what it takes too, because yeah, we, I've been talking too how busy we get with life and work and, and sometimes it's hard to take that break, but that might be a way to, uh, get somebody, you know, that likes to fish um out back out on the water to enjoy you know this this fishing that we do so yeah, and um there's nothing in the world that replaces time on the water oh, that's right just a you know just another little, little mm -hmm. tip mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what bait you're using that's it doesn't right. matter uh the more time you spend on the water the more time you can spend mm -hmm. on the water uh, the more weekends you can go that's right um it's the, it's a world of a difference. Mm -hmm. That's my goal because I know, like, I have a habit of working too much. So my goal here yeah, it doesn't matter the rod and reel you're using. Doesn't matter oh. the boat you're using. Yep. If you spend enough time in the water, mm -hmm. you'll, uh, you know, you, you're going to find success. And there's no wrong way to do it. I always say all the time, there's no wrong way to do this stuff. And and don't don't get because there's so much information. Yeah. Sometimes we get locked yeah, in. It's got to be yeah. like to your point. Got to be this rod with this line with this weight with this no. Like, just like you say, grab yeah. a rod, yeah. uh, get a good knot, you know, everything If, if, if in you here just have a work. question, even if you've never fished with me before, if you have a question, um, you have a question about your jet boat, if you have a question about buying a jet boat, you can text me or email mm -hmm. me and um, I'll give you a call back or I'll just talk to you through email. See, that's great because I didn't want to say it, but I think most of these, everybody we talked to have been the same way. We talked to Chris yeah. Gorsuch up at the Susquehanna 100%. and he says, I can't take everybody fishing, so... You know, but if you have a question or whatever, call me. Yeah. And I literally, I had a question about a jet boat. It's funny you say that. And I, and I, and we had just talked to him. So I thought, well, let me call him. And then I, about through the conversation, so you on the water right now? And he said, yeah, I am. Uh, Cause he alluded to, I'll call you back later. But mm -hmm. he, cause he always said too, I can always give you information too. And that, that's what, mm -hmm. again, I also love about this industry <clears throat> is there's great people in it and it's not, you know, it's not always a big secret. And yeah, we want to support you and want people to yeah, his, get a guy his, to trip He has with different you, opinions but, than I do and yeah, different, all, different ways to yeah, approach mm -hmm. it. And, and, and yeah, but everyone he, does. If he since he offered that, I'm just saying too. He, he gave you his phone number. You can look him up online. He's offered that. Yeah, reach out to him, mm -hmm. talk to him, connect with him, and and because that information too is yeah. is what we're all what you're all about uh, here with fishing. Especially, the yeah, especially in this area where you have so many people that are just getting into the outdoor sports mm -hmm. with Western. And I thought like Travis's story about like he's getting off the water and two paddle boarders mm -hmm. just get yeah. on to do a nine mile float right. at five o'clock at night. It's like. If you the rivers are not like these little uh, lakes, they are wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, yeah. they can they can hurt you real quick, especially mm -hmm. if you don't if you've never done a float trip before mm -hmm. and you don't know your distances. Call somebody like Jeff and be like, "Listen, yeah. I'm going to take my wife out in a canoe mm -hmm. and I'm going to go to Route 50 to Route 7. Mm -hmm. Is this a good idea? I'm mm -hmm. starting at one o'clock in the afternoon." He might be like, "That's probably not a great idea mm -hmm. to do it." Mm -hmm. So just go and talk to a professional. They'll give you information just to make sure you're safe. So you don't right. die. That's like right. that, that's a that's a yeah. huge thing. And, and you know, uh, it doesn't matter the time of year. I, I wear a um, life jacket all the time mm -hmm. and they have real comfortable ones that are out nowadays that are yeah, auto inflatable that's, that's and stuff good. like yeah. that. Uh, that's mm -hmm. just your sha it's, uh, safety tip of the day. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're on a river, I would suggest you wear one, yeah. especially if you're uh, uh, a not, not a seasoned mm -hmm. boater mm -hmm. because um, uh, things change fast. Absolutely. No, no, that's especially that's good on the stuff. Potomac and the Susquehanna. They just, they just did a rescue on the Susquehanna recently. Hmm. Nothing, nothing terrible, but they had to go on. It, mm -hmm. it was a big enough story that they, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it was on, online. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And when it goes bad, it goes bad quick, especially on a river. And that water's moving, yeah. that current's moving. You get lodged. And up then you have to rock. remember too. You want to pay attention to the depth. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're on the Potomac River in late August around Edwards Ferry, mm -hmm. and and um, it hasn't rained in weeks. I mean, if you fall in, you don't have to freak out. Just stand up and walk back to the shoreline. Right. You know, so just, right. you know, just keep Common your, sense. uh, yeah, keep your wits about you. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
No, yeah. good stuff. And then, guys, give him a follow. Shadow, Shallow Water Adventures. All of his information will be linked in the episode description. Please book a trip with him. Like him on his social medias. And again, please like and subscribe to this channel. We are the fastest and largest growing outdoor podcast and radio show in the greater D.C. area. And we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye, guys. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.